Hello and welcome to another French Eek's Top Tip video. I'm Craig Phillips, their brand ambassador. In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare and paint a wooden garage door and frame so it lasts using three different methods. One's the trusty paintbrush, a small radiator roller, and a handheld paint spray. And the products I'll be using are French Eek's Alfresco inside outside range. The colors are blackjack, smudge but first off i'm going to clean all the surfaces down with a concentrated sugar soap it's really easy to use you're going to have to dilute it with some warm water one part sugar soap and 10 parts water give this a little stir up and scrub down the surfaces using a sponge in circumstances like this a garage door with a v-groove pattern in it i tend to use a small scrub brush to get in between all the grooves once the surface have been scrubbed, rinse them off with some clean water and a cloth, then start to dry them with some tissue. Leave them to fully dry before you continue with the preparation. Now I'm using a cordless orbital sander. If you don't have one of these, a sand and block and some sandpaper will do. So now the sanding's complete, dust it down, give it a good close inspection to see if there's any cracks, gaps or holes that will need filling. Well, with the age of this door, there is sadly quite a few cracks, almost on every panel, as well as the odd nail holes here and there. Sections of the frame where they've been screwed into the brickwork still have holes in the side. And there's even gaps between some of the trims that are mounted on the frame that also need filling. So I'm going to leave my filler overnight to fully cure. Now my filler is dry, I'm going to re-sand it so it's smooth, ready to paint. But as you can see, there's quite a lot of it. These doors are over 22 years old. So I'm going to go back to my cordless sander. In my opinion, it really is worth putting the time and effort in to do the preparation properly to get a professional result. Because remember, if you fail to prepare, well, prepare to fail and have a good close inspection around all the door furniture and various areas just in case it needs that extra little bit of sanding by hand. Then give the areas a good dusting off with an old paintbrush and wipe down with a damp cloth. Now remember when undertaking this type of work always wear a dust mask. Now the filler has been sanded, dusted and wiped down with a damp cloth I'm about to seal it. The reason we do this is because it's a lot more porous than the rest of the door where it's already had paint on and numerous layers of paint. But I'm going to seal this first because if it didn't, I could dilute my paint down and paint over that. It would absorb into that filler. Once it dries, it would look a bit patchy and you may need three or four coats over it before you get a good solid looking finish. So the hack is using French Eek's finishing coat straight out of the tub paint that on, let that dry, and then you can paint over it. By sealing these, you can rest assured that even your first coat of paint won't dry patchy and start flashing through. Now I'm not painting the whole door here, I'm just literally going over, I'm kind of feathering it over just where the filler is itself. It's easy to apply, I'm using an old paintbrush, but of course you could use a small radiator roller as well. And of course, it's not often I can do work around the house without my apprentice interrupting. And I'm wanting to know the tricks of the trade. And in fairness, at just three years of age, she's quite a dab hand when it comes to a paintbrush. But I'm not surprised. She has been taught by the best, being Laura, of course. Finishing Coat is a water-based product. It's harmless to people and the environment. It's also gone through rigorous testing to be certified child safe. It's UK, CA and EN713 compliant. Now it's dry, I'm ready to apply my first coat of paint and I'm using my trusty paintbrush. I'm gonna start by cutting in around the top frame of the door itself. And as always, we'd advise the paint with the grain. 
Now the style of these old wooden doors is a smoothly planed tongue and groove panel. These are clamped together with an outer frame holding them into position. So painting them can be quite tricky. You've got lots of V grooves between each slat. So when using your paintbrush, make sure you get tight in between these the best you can. And continue to apply your paint in an up and down motion going with the grain. Now you might have some deep awkward crevices in between the grooves where you have to stab the edge of the brush in there. Once you've done that, just feather over the top of it to help get a smoother finish on the surface. Now my garage door consists of four separate sections that all bifold together. So I'm going to start with my paintbrush painting around the outside edge and the tricky bits around the hinges. Then I'm going to continue it using a small four inch radiator roller. Now this is a little bit quicker applying the paint on in larger areas like this. However, it's not so easy to get in between the grooves. Therefore, you may have to use your paintbrush to stab in between them and then quickly roll her over the face of it. Or sometimes just by tilting the edge of the roller, you can get in between them. Either way, if you do have to apply the paint using your paintbrush in between the joints, always finish it off over the surface with your radiator roller. The Alfresco range is self-priming paint, meaning no primer or undercoat is required. It's also self-sealing that doesn't require a top coat for durability. Self-leveling, meaning little or no brush marks are achievable. It dries flat with an almost no sheen finish. Now, if you are lucky enough to have a handheld paint sprayer, you are going to have to dilute the paint because as we know, Frenchy paint is great quality. It's lovely and thick and it struggles a little bit going through your paint sprayer. So I'm going to pour the rest of this tin in here and just add maybe about 10% water. Give that a good stir up. That's the type of consistency we're looking for. So click the unit together and then you're ready to start spraying. But don't forget to mask up around the outside edges to avoid any overspray going onto the brickwork. Now, of course, it is going to be a lot quicker when using a handheld paint sprayer like this. Hold the nozzle about four to six inches away from the surface and continue the motion up and down from top to bottom. If you're not as experienced as me as using a paint sprayer, you can always turn the paint flow and air flow down and do it at a lot slower pace until you get used to using them. So that's the three different options you have of applying your paint. So once this first coat dries, after about two hours, I'll apply a second coat. Now the first coat of paint is dry, I'm gonna give it a gentle sanding just with a sand and sponge before I apply the second coat. When using alfresco paint, you wouldn't normally need to sand between coats because each layer bonds with the one below. However, when painting outside, you can often get some molecules floating around in the air that could potentially stick to the surface of your wet paint. And by using a very light sand and sponge, you can remove these in preparation for your second coat. So I've gone and diluted all of my paint. So I'm going to apply my second coat across the whole area using my paint spray. Now it's had a couple of hours to become touch dry. I'm applying a third coat. And always remember, when you're diluting your paint down using a paint spray, you are gonna need more coats. Two good solid coats applied with a brush undiluted is normally perfect. But when I use my paint spray, I'll do a minimum of three to four. So that's four layers of paint applied with the paint spray on the main garage door using the smudge. It's almost dry, I've removed the masking tape 
but now I'm going to cut in carefully using a paintbrush with the Alfresco's Blackjack. I know I do use my paint sprayer a lot on large areas, however, I do find it quite therapeutic using French Heat paintbrushes on the detailed areas like this, because it's nice, thick and creamy and so easy to apply. When you're using French Heat paints, you can see why hundreds of thousands of French Heat fan forum members say it's the best paint in the world. Now take your time when cutting in with a brush on the door frame. If you're not that confident using the brush, you can always mask in along the edge of the brickwork while you're cutting in around the trims. In some occasions, you may have to open the garage door a fraction to be able to cut in on the edge of the frame or even the door. Now this wooden frame has had a plastic UPVC trim glued to the side, but don't worry because the Alfresco paint will adhere to both materials. So that's one solid coat of blackjack complete right the way around the frame. We'll leave this to dry for at least a couple of hours and then apply a second coat. Now these old doors of mine have got four heavy duty locks. They've already been painted from when I was spray painting the doors. Now I could paint over them with the blackjack, which would look fine. However, Laura's got a trick up her sleeve. Craig's not done a bad job of painting these garage doors. However, he has left me with the much more detailed work of transforming these metal locks. By applying just a couple of coats of French Chic's French Shimmer. You can see the full step-by-step -step video of Laura doing this on French Heat TV. So that's my wooden garage door and frame now complete. And Laura hasn't done a bad job of the locks either. If you're looking for more inspiration, head over to the French Heat Fan Forum on Facebook. And if you want to see more how-to videos, subscribe to the YouTube channel, French Heat TV. But if you just want to know about the vast range of products that French Heat stock, head over to their website, frenchheatpaint.co.uk.